So Sonic Frontiers Update 3 has been released to everybody to enjoy. This is a really meaty update with so much content added that it's probably going to be a lot to cover. This is of course the long awaited update ever since Kishimoto started spilling the beans a little bit on Twitter and taking feedback from literally us. Ah oh, here we go again. Update 3 would not be the way it is if it was not for you guys. So shout out to the Sonic community for bringing this update to life in a way. You know, uh, if it's actually good. <laughs> so obviously we'll be reviewing all of the main content in this game as well as the side content that has been added. And I will be answering the question, was this worth the wait and is this worth our time? And if you've waited to play any Frontiers at all since the first update, I think now would be the time to jump in and I'm gonna let you know why you probably should. Or maybe some of the reasons will make you not want to jump in. But make sure you guys are subscribed and hit the bell notification so you don't miss content like this. So let's continue. Oh man, oh man, Sonic Frontiers Update 3. So first, I'm just gonna give my really, really quick thoughts before we dive into the individual specific details of how I feel about things and if things are good or not. Overall, I will say, just straight out, this update, if this was a paid for content, it probably would be ripped apart by everybody. So again, we have to bear in mind that this is a free content update. This doesn't have to be played at all, and it's also just technically optional content. This is all completely free, with probably almost no budget to make any of this stuff whatsoever, so we have to judge it with that in mind, but that doesn't mean, you know, we can't say is this good or bad or not. So I may sound a little harsh, because yes, I understand this is free, but again, this is still content that they release that I will judge freely. So let's start with the biggest thing that this update is truly about which is the multiple playable characters or that's what i would say it was truly about but i honestly don't think they were the highlight of this update whatsoever and i'm gonna go into detail why about this but first character we're gonna look at here is amy amy is the first character you actually start out as in this update and then you go from knuckles to tails then back to sonic and then amy knuckles tails again and then back to Sonic. And I'm not gonna lie, that cycle of character swapping kinda can make this whole DLC go up to about eight hours long. Depending on if you wanna try to get the upgrades for the characters or not, this is a long DLC. But anyways, Amy actually feels probably the best to play as in this entire update out of the three characters. Her movement is kind of odd, but I had to describe her, she's kind of very floaty, similarly to say like Princess Peach in Super Smash Brothers. She can kind of hover slash float, low key better than Knuckles. And of course she uses the cards to fight, she doesn't really use her hammer like that. Her hammer is used for a quick side loop. All of the characters have a quick side loop replacement, which where they do a specific move that creates a little side loop. And Amy's is slamming a hammer on the ground that creates a heart shaped side loop. And of course they give her a three basic hit attack combo where she swings the card left and right. And then she does a little spin and you can actually choose to hold down the button to keep the spin going. And there's actually a skill that will allow you to keep spinning infinitely if you'd like. Now, I haven't actually used the characters that much in combat because you really have to grind out their levels because a lot of these bosses in the world are extremely over leveled compared to how the characters start out at level 1, so you really have to grind out leveling up all of these characters if you actually want to take them for a test spin against bosses. Sonic doesn't even do a lot of damage maxed out against some of these enemies like the Spider Plus or Guardian Plus. So they kind of made this DLC a little bit grindy. But something really odd about Amy is that she doesn't have homing attack delay like Knuckles or even Sonic does. So you can just keep continuously homing attacking enemies without that stupid bounce off animation that, you know, everyone kind of hates. I don't know why they gave that to her, but she kind of is like a Sonic reskin a little bit, which isn't a bad thing, but she is still pretty unique with her triple jump hover and cards and all that kind of stuff. But she is the most similar to Sonic, I will say. And like I mentioned earlier, I'd say she probably was the best to play because she had the most smooth controls and a lot of her stuff didn't really feel jank compared to the other two. And speaking of the other two, Knuckles is a huge disappointment. They butchered my man Knuckles. He is just very, very janky. He even has his infinite jump glitch from Sonic Boom in the game. They did not understand the assignment for Knuckles. His wall climbing is very janky because 
It's almost like it doesn't detect the direction you're holding that well. You may hold left, but the knuckles will go right for some reason, depending on the camera. And a lot of Knuckles' stuff is camera dependent, which I think is awful for a game like this. The direction you go should never be fully based on the camera or partially based on the camera in that way. Well, Knuckles is gliding, and if you have the camera facing a certain way, you can't even turn around. You have to turn the camera along with moving Knuckles to make sure he glides properly. Otherwise, it just doesn't really respond to your inputs. It's very unresponsive and very janky, and I don't know why he does such a hard turn while gliding like he's a literal tank. I don't know, to me personally, Knuckles being this way is pretty upsetting, because he was the one I was looking forward to most, and he also controls the worst. Now granted, in my time playing through this campaign, I did not get every single skill for all of the characters, I got most of them. And I think for Knuckles, I'm missing out on his spin boost as well as his infinite glide, which where he will actually not lose altitude and his speed will increase while gliding, which is going to be pretty broken. But it's pretty cool that he has that and maybe that can help with making him feel better to play as. But overall, just the turning controls are not it. But Knuckles with his punch combo is, you know, kind of a reference to Sonic Advance 3, I'd say. And it's pretty cool, but that punch combo also allows you to do the Knuckles infinite jump. Which is hilarious, like there's no way that this character twice in the last 10 years has had an infinite jump glitch in two different games. That is insane to me. But I'll say this, his character theme for the island is actually pretty nice. Um, I like all of them actually, Amy's is good as well. Tails is also pretty good. His might be the best, or Amy's might be the best. But I enjoy the island themes for the character. But yeah, Knuckles is uh, he's not chuckling. I'm gonna tell you that and it's really sad to see and he has to be the worst to play as I'd never want to touch him again after that but I also feel like it's a really simple fix just make his gliding kind of work like Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 don't restrict the movement on the gliding in that way it's really odd in a game like Sonic Frontiers where you can do full 360s in the open zone as Sonic and jump and go all over the place but when they create Knuckles, they give him tank controls for flying. That doesn't really make any sense. Just let him have a better turn degree angle or whatever you want to call it that makes it more smooth. And don't base it off of the camera, please. Honestly, that's all I can really say on Knuckles. It just, it just kind of sucks. Tails, on the other hand, I don't think is as good as Amy to play as, but he's actually pretty solid. I think his gameplay is quite enjoyable, and some of the platforming challenges they create in the open zone, specifically for Tails, gives me hope that maybe in another game, they can really go all out on platforming challenges for the specific characters. Like with Tails, there was platforming challenges where you had to use his wrench in order to break the balloons while flying so you could progress, or go through a dash ring in the air and then it just launches you forward and you have to dodge the enemies left and right while flying and also throwing wrenches to make your pathway clear. That kind of stuff can be very much improved in another game with Tails and just have full on mechanics that work around honestly all of these characters. If all of these characters were built with Frontiers in mind, a lot of these mechanics would be a lot different in my opinion. Remember, these characters are being added into something that was already there that was built specifically for how Sonic plays, and these characters don't play entirely like Sonic. But anyways, Tails, like I said, is the second best to play as. He doesn't have full-on combat like the other characters, and instead he just throws wrenches. And actually, I kind of like that he throws wrenches, it kind of fits his character. Something really cool about Tails' abilities is he actually has a gun or blaster that he can use for as his side loop compared to knuckles slamming on the ground to get a side loop and amy slamming on the ground to get a side loop tails actually has a side loop that he can shoot at things you can't really aim it you kind of just have to stand in the right position to get it where you want it to go but it's pretty cool that he has a different kind of side loop and Tails' power boost is literally just a cyclone, and you can just straight up fly. You can fly anywhere and everywhere as long as you have boost or you can put the infinite boost on, and you can just fly. And I honestly think that's overall amazing. But something that kind of bugs me about Tails' flight, his actual flight, is that there's a weird startup on it when you press the jump button. Tails does like a little weird animation and then boosts himself up forward. And kind of same with Knuckles. I don't know why they added those startup animations as they don't feel natural whatsoever and they kind of just feel like they halt your movement for a minute. Another pretty big deal if I'm being honest is Tails not having the ability to use the homing attack because a lot of this game is built around that. Yeah, Tails can just fly to stuff but it takes so much longer not having a homing attack in order to just 
get to things quicker and combat with Tails is probably going to be very annoying. For me personally, those are the major downsides of the Tails gameplay style and that's probably why I don't think he's better than Amy because I hardly have any issues with Amy's gameplay style, which is kind of unfortunate because I was looking forward to playing her the least and like again, I was looking forward to playing Knuckles the most and he's trash. And that kind of leads me into a huge issue with this update is just overall jankiness. Once again, I know this is free, probably not on a budget. It, but the jankiness of this update is pretty huge. So let's talk about the elephant in the room with this update and it's the difficulty. This update is quite difficult and oftentimes it's not fair I guess. But I do feel like most of the update difficulty wise is pretty fair and it does actually take skill to beat some of these things. But there are some things that are pretty unfair about this update. For example, the trial towers. So once you climb the towers, which I actually think is pretty amazing platforming, this is probably one of the best additions within this update, but we'll get more on that later. But the trials at the top of the towers are actually pretty varied on what they actually are. The first one is just a battle with a bunch of sped up guardians that are kind of harder. And the soldier enemies I don't think were too difficult, you just have to beat them within the time limit. And you may be sweating just a little bit. And Sonic's stats here are definitely limited for every single one of these trials, and you'd think that's a great thing, but honestly, it's not for some of them. So that one's fine, it's okay. But the second trial tower is actually pretty atrocious. And I'm not just saying this because I had a hard time with it, I really didn't. It only took me a couple tries, and I really just went into gamer mode and just completed it in my own way. A lot of people have found different ways to complete this trial, such as pairing the saw blades back and forth in order to actually continually hit the enemy, which is probably the most efficient way to complete this trial challenge. But what I did is I would side loop the enemy and just do one homing attack and two punches and just repeat the process but very fast on every single enemy in order to complete the challenge. And honestly, the problem with this trial is that there isn't enough time and it's extremely repetitive to do this and I wouldn't really call this a challenge. It's just kind of stupid and there's not a whole lot of time to do it. And it kind of feels like when you do figure it out, you're cheesing the game rather than figuring out some cool strategy. So yeah, a lot of people have gotten stuck on that, but that's not even the worst one. The worst one is the very last trial challenge. But before we get to that one, the other trial challenges are pretty bad. They're insanely easy for no reason. One of the trials makes you fight a normal Kronos Island ninja at level 1, expecting it to take around 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes on the timer to fight this stupid ninja that doesn't really do anything. And it doesn't take long at all, you can beat it in literally 30 seconds. I have no idea what they were playtesting, but this is just not making any sense at all. The point that I'm making with the critique of this is that the balancing is just not right, and it never really has been with Sonic Frontiers, and I feel like those problems are extremely exemplified here. Kishimoto, what were you cooking? You overcooked, man. You have to make progression natural. You can't be so jumpy with things. You can't make someone do the hardest, almost unfair challenge in the world and then just have them parry a couple dogs and just beat them immediately. So I just have no idea what Kishimoto was cooking with the balancing in this update, if I'm being honest. But like I said, that's not even the worst one. The worst one is the final challenge before you fight the final boss, which is doing all of the Titan fights back to back at level one with a new perfect parry and with only 400 seconds on the clock. Now, someone like me who really wanted the parry to be changed in update 3, I got that, but not in the way I really wanted it. It wasn't a global change that they made to the game, it's just something that's locked to the supersonic boss fights for some reason. And also, I think the other playable characters have a new parry that lasts about like 3 or 4 seconds and then you can't hold it forever. But Sonic's is still the same, you can hold his parry forever, and it's locked to the supersonic boss fights. Now granted, it does make them a lot more fun in my opinion, especially the new final boss of this update which we will talk about later, but I think just overall it's a weird decision and it does make the boss fights better, but it's not really fun when you have to fight all three titans back to back at level 1 with only about 400 rings because the wyvern fight wastes a lot of time and you have to be really really good I think to actually get through that. And that's not a problem at all, but I hate to say it, it has the Dark Souls effect, but probably not even as good. When you lose that Titan 
boss rush, you have to start from the very beginning, and it's very, very repetitive having to do that all over again, and that's not true difficulty in my opinion, that's just an annoyance. There should have been checkpoints for each titan fight in my opinion, and if they don't want to do checkpoints, they should just skip straight to the fights immediately and not the part where you have to grab the chaos thermal to turn it into supersonic. I think that part wastes so much time where you can just turn into supersonic and get straight into the fight. I think that would make it a lot more bearable for the people who struggled with that. And around when I got to this and the new perfect parry was implemented specifically in this trial, I found out that the difficulty mode actually changes how the parry works. If you're on hard difficulty, it is literally like probably about 2-3 to three frames to parry anything. Normal mode seems to be about 4-5 to five frames. In easy mode, I think literally gives you a two second window to parry, which is actually quite long. Again, these aren't bad changes, these are changes that I literally asked for and I wanted. I do think the hard mode parry is just a little too hard in my opinion. It's literally about a two frame window. I think that's a little too much for this kind of game. Maybe three to four frames. Basically what the normal mode parry is, I think that should have been the hard parry. Because it isn't that much easier on normal, if I'm being quite honest, because I've tried all three to see the differences. But yeah, it just should have been locked to only this. But that aside, getting through that is probably the hardest hurdle you will overcome in this entire update. I don't think anything comes close to that. Not even the stupid side loop, the flower enemies. But I will say this, I think the best part of the update outside of the supersonic final boss is indeed the platforming. I think the platforming in this update is probably way better than the actual main game in Frontiers as there is so much less automation and you actually have to use Sonic's abilities especially a lot better in order to platform through these platforming sections especially on these towers. And they added a lot more slopes for Sonic to utilize and even loops. And the slopes are really really fun to use when you're using the spin dash and just flying off and landing on a platform and it really seems like it was intended. And speaking of the platforming, I've played a couple of the cyberspace levels, and I have to say, it's kind of hit or miss. But the cyberspace levels somewhat have a B-side, similar to, I guess to Celeste, and these B-side levels have a spin on them, such as having a bomb on Sonic and you have to beat the level before the bomb goes off, or racing a hologram Tails, or I even played one that had a zero gravity mechanic going through the level. And like I said, these are hit or miss. I think the best kinds were the Tails race levels and as well as the bomb levels. Those are pretty fun and the level design was really rewarding for using, again, the spin dash and slopes and all that kind of stuff and there wasn't as much automation as before. So I really enjoyed that about this update, for the most part. But then there's some levels that are very questionable, which I have to say, like the anti-gravity level, it isn't terrible but it just doesn't feel good to play. And I played one level that had like so many branching pathways that it was kind of directionless and felt like just a mess of level design. That really did not jive with me at all and it felt just not good to play. And the cyberspace stages this time around give you the, I believe, Lookout Coco or Lockout Coco, I can't remember what they're called exactly. And those allow you, when you're playing as Sonic, to actually gain access to the towers. Similarly, how you would get the keys in order to get the Chaos Emerald Vaults. And the other characters were delegated to finding the Chaos Emeralds to bring to Sonic. And I had no problem with that objective, but I feel like it didn't really give them enough to do. And I felt no reason to level up anything on the characters except just run to point A and point B. There was one time where I felt like I had to level up Tails in order to get to this point and I actually just had to get the Cyclone and fly up into the air because I had zero clue because the objective marker was literally in the sky above the big pyramid in Oranos Island and I just could not figure out how to get up there. So I just grinded skill points and got the Cyclone and flew up there. That was the only time I felt pressed to actually do anything with the characters outside and unlock their skills. If I'm being 100% honest, Update 3's biggest enemy is balance. I don't even think the content they planned out is bad. I don't think the story is even that bad. I don't think most of it is bad. It just needed balance and it needed more time in the oven. But at the end of the day, it's a free update that only adds content to Frontiers. So it's really hard to be that angry about it. If this was something that we paid for, I think I would be pretty furious that I paid like 20 or something dollars 
for an update that doesn't feel finished. But at the end of the day, I think the huge saving grace of this update that we've yet to talk about is the big thing, the final boss that they added that actually is better than the actual final boss in the main game. And it's the new Supreme fight. This fight is probably the best Titan fight out of all of them. Flashiness and everything. It's just kind of everything that I wanted the actual final boss to be. For one, Supreme has a new grotesque design with the different arms coming out of its back, which looks pretty crazy. And on top of that, the end is just right above it, plugging a huge cord inside of the Supreme, giving I'm it health point out over the time. issues with this fight before I go and gush about everything. The main issue with this fight is just that Frontiers' targeting system is terrible, and they don't really explain some things. That big cord, you actually have to defeat it in order for Supreme to stop gaining health over time, but you can't really just change your lock on. You actually have to attack the enemy and press the dodge button and Sonic will just automatically start targeting the cord. That is a very unintuitive way to actually break the cord or change lock on targets. That doesn't make any sense. Frontier should have just had a smooth lock on since the beginning and that's never been fixed. I also think that the battle arena for this is kind of bad with all the trees it can get in the way of the camera i would prefer this battle to be honestly entirely in outer space on some like cool dimensional like floor or something like that for supreme to stand on so that way he can you know do some of those attacks without it looking weird in space but i think overall those are the main issues i've had with this fight but let's talk about everything that's kind of peak about this first of all the new sonic form cyber sonic is what a lot of people are dubbing it is honestly really cool. It's not a full on form change where he changes color, he kind of gets a red glow and blue eyes, and his mannerisms change completely. He's literally just Vegito, which is awesome. Sonic does finger snaps and he just one hand swipes attacks away, and it's so raw and fire and just amazing that they made Sonic this cool. This is a way cooler form than Super Sonic because it just changes the way that Sonic acts. I don't mind form changes that don't really change appearance as long as they just feel different. And yeah, this feels different than Supersonic. I'd say Supersonic is a very aggressive form that Sonic just wants to just take everything down. And this form just feels like a very calm and collected Supersonic that feels like nothing can touch him whatsoever and he doesn't even have to be aggressive about it. Oh, you're throwing a moon at Sonic? Zoom, swipe that away. By far, this is probably one of the best Supersonic fights in the entire series. And not to mention, I'm here is playing in the background with orchestral instruments as well as Kellen Quinn, who sung Undefeatable Breakthrough It All and Finds Your Flame, on I'm Here. It's honestly just perfect. It's what the ending again should have been. But the fact that we got it at all is great. And honestly, that's all I kind of really wanted from this update. I wanted multiple playable characters to roam around with and a improved final boss and just some quality of life changes. I didn't expect to get this whole 7 to 8 hour campaign and I honestly don't think I really wanted it. But once again, I'm not upset about it because it's free. And honestly, I hate to say it, but sometimes less is more and more is less. But again, pertaining to this fight, there's so much cool stuff that just happens animation wise and gameplay wise, again, it's the best Titan fight. And something I really found interesting that I wanted to point out is the Psyloop animation for this Titan is crazy. Sonic creates two vortex ceilings trying to crush Supreme from the bottom and top. And if you Psyloop him again, it brings him even further into the air, trying to crush him even further. And while Supreme is trying to stop himself from being crushed, he shoots lasers at Sonic, which you can parry and then teleport to his face for a counterattack. That kind of stuff is crazy and I love to see it. So I really, really think that the end of this DLC update was 1000% worth all the pain that a lot of these people went through. I'd say personally, it wasn't that painful until it got to the Titans because it was just a little annoying having to restart. But overall, I can see why a lot of people struggle with this update. I don't think it was balanced and it wasn't really kept in mind for players who don't really like challenge like that and again some of the challenge is not even fair if I'm being honest even if I completed it easily myself. And honestly I hate to say that I expected better but I can't be upset. At the end of the day Kishimoto did say that this was a test for the future of Sonic going forward and he wanted to see what he could implement now in a game that's already been made from the ground up and they've just added stuff on top of that. 
and see how they can maybe apply this in the next Sonic game. And honestly, I have to commend Kishimoto. Even with all of my criticisms, the fact that he took the feedback from Twitter and tried his best to implement this in a free update, I commend him still at the end of the day because I think Kishimoto is someone who will grow over time when it comes to the Sonic franchise that will only get better and improve upon the things that we already like that he's done and maybe get rid of the things that we don't like that he's done. See, now he has the idea in his head about difficulty, but he honestly went a little too far and didn't make things balanced, but that can easily not be the case in the next Sonic game from the lessons learned from our feedback here for update three. He knows what we want, but he just needs to learn how to do it and not overcook the product. Simply to put it, Kishimoto and his team overcooked. They overcooked update three and it's a little burnt. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little burnt. But there's still quite a few parts of it that are pretty edible and those parts do taste pretty good. Food analogies out the way, I think update three is probably not better than the base game of Sonic Frontiers and it doesn't really change Sonic Frontiers as a whole, it just adds some extra things for better or worse, and it's all optional, so it doesn't actually even affect the base game whatsoever. You can play the base game just how it was. I'd say Update 1 and 2 affected the base game way more than Update 3 has, because almost all of it is optional. And it is kind of booty cheeks that you can't play these other characters in different islands, they're locked to Oranos Island and on that specific version of Oranos Island for the DLC update. That kind of stuff probably should have been implemented and it sucks that it's not there. So I'm going to put it to you like this. If this was a paid update, this is probably a hard 5 out of 10. But it's free, not really much of a budget, fan feedback was taken, and this is an experiment for the next Sonic game. So with those parameters in mind, I would probably give this update anywhere from a 6.5 to a 7.5. That range very much depends on how I'm feeling. But I'd say at this current moment, maybe about a 7. It's about a 7 out of 10 free update. Key word, free. So again, I liked it. I just think there was a lot of problems and it can hinder the enjoyment of it a little bit. Especially like Knuckles not working right and just some odd decisions they made with the balancing. I just think everything was there, even the story moments. I think they cooked with that. The cutscenes are pretty nice and the added lore is pretty amazing as well. And Cybersonic going insane was just all things that I love to see. But again, some parts just weren't finished. So honestly speaking, I really can't be that mad about it. And I don't like the fact that some people act like this game killed their dog or something. It's really not that deep in my opinion. I do think the marketing for it was pretty hyped up and maybe a little overhyped, but again, I can't blame some people for being upset due to the fact of just being hyped, but overall, I think some people were overreacting about this update, but yeah. Well, those are my thoughts, opinions, and my review on Sonic Frontiers Update 3. If you guys enjoyed this review, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss more videos like this. And of course, like always, I'll see you in the next one. Well, whatever happens, happens.